Let's head over to Dollar Tree and we're going to grab a paper towel holder. Let's all run down to the hardware store and grab us a wood round. This wood round, we're going to turn it to the right side there, but we got to sand the edges. It feels nice and smooth on the top, but the edges get a little rough. Let's go ahead and put some 80 grit on there and then we're going to switch over to 220 and get it all nice and even. These wood rounds are made with pine, which is considered a soft wood. So we've got to condition the wood. We can use a pre-wood conditioner on this and it looks a little wet. That's what we want. Go ahead and get that all done. Don't forget to get the edges. Let it dry about 30 minutes to an hour. Once it dries, it's time to put on some stain. Use the stain of your choice. I like to go dark every time. So I'm gonna use a little bit of walnut that was hitting, sitting in my cabinet. I'm gonna go ahead and stain this all the way using a towel and then take off any excess. Now, we're gonna get three of those paper towel holders and we're gonna set them in place. What we need to do is paint them. I like this hammered look from the spray paint that I got. I'm gonna spray paint it little squirts at a time. That's what you wanna do because we don't want it dripping down the metal. So if it takes two small coats, that's better than one thick coat. Once we get it all painted, let it dry. Now we gotta curve the edges a little bit and bend them. Don't bend them too far. Just get them a little 20 degrees and we're gonna do all three at the same angle. Now we're gonna put them in place on the bottom of our wood round. Put them in place and I'm gonna take these little electric hooks that I got out of the hardware store and I'm gonna put four all the way around each side of these circles here. What that's gonna do is I'm gonna mark them with a pen and once I got them marked, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill. Now, just a little tap of the drill bit is all you need. We don't wanna go all the way through. Once I got them done, I'm gonna go ahead and put little tiny screws in and hold these clips in place. Once I get all four on each one of these done, it's really secure, but I'm gonna go and measure at the eight and six inch mark on these legs, and I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue, and then I'm gonna take some twine. I'm gonna set it there and let the hot glue set up. It only takes about 15 seconds. Cut off the excess, and then I'm gonna start wrapping it all the way around. Starting at that six inch mark, I'm gonna work all the way up to the eight. But halfway up, let's put a little bit more glue on just to keep this string and hold it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right around there, let it set, let it hold, and then continue wrapping. Once I get to the end, it's just gonna take a little bit more hot glue, put that on there, hold it in place, cut off the excess, then I'm gonna switch over and just cut off all those little whiskers that are showing up. Once I get all that done, this thing's ready. I'm gonna set it in place and I'm gonna decorate it. It actually turned out really nice, look at this. It just is awesome. And I made this all by myself from around from Home Depot and legs that I got that are paper towel holders from the Dollar Tree. The next time you have a lamp you no longer need, don't get rid of it. Create something super useful instead. To start this project, I want to remove everything but the main section of this lamp. First, I want to remove the cord from the lamp. This is quite easy to do. Just make sure your lamp isn't plugged in and then just snip the cord with a pair of scissors. I'm just going to twist the top part until it loosens and then I can pull the cord up right through the middle of the lamp. I want to remove the frame for the lampshade as well. I don't need it either. The pieces that make up the middle of my lamp are held together with a bar that goes down the middle and just nut and washer to tighten them. I want the pieces to hold together in a little more permanent way though, so I'm going to use some glue to attach them each to each other. I'm going to add the glue to each of the joints and then leave it all to dry before moving on. While the glue on the lamp is drying, I'm going to get the top and bottom ready. I found these signs at the dollar store and they're going to make perfect um, pieces for this project. To give the lamp something extra to grab onto, I'm going to add a thinner wood round under the top piece. A little wood glue will hold this into place perfectly. I'm ready to paint now and I want to mark off the middle on this top piece so that I make sure that the lamp sits securely and evenly in the middle when I put this together. I'm going to find the middle and use the top of the lamp to trace a little circle. This will make it so much easier when I put things together so that it's not tippy. With all of the glue dry and everything ready to go, I'm ready to paint. I'm going to use the white chalky paint to cover both the base of the lamp and the wood so that it all looks like one. Now that everything is done on the lamp, I'm going to paint the wood in the same color. With everything painted, it's time to assemble it all. I want to attach the wood top to the lamp. The circle that I drew before is going to help me so that the lamp is correctly centered. I just need to add some glue to the lamp top and the circle on the wood, let it sit for about 10 minutes or so, and then I can join them together and it will be nice and solid. How cute is this little table? I'm so glad I didn't get rid of this lamp. It was perfect for this project. I hope this has inspired you to turn your old lamp that you no longer need into a table as well. It's such a handy little thing to have.
You know all those lonely donated lampshades you see at thrift stores? Well, pick up a matching pair. And while you're at it, pick up a thrifted belt with a buckle that is one to two inches wide. Run a bead of clear glue around the perimeter, take the other lampshade and flip it upside down. Place it on top of the other lampshade and hold it for a few minutes until the glue dries. Take some jute twine and tie the inner hardware of the two lamps together. Give the connected shades a little shake to make sure they are securely connected. Now take the belt and buckle it around the skinny center of the two lampshades. If the belt is too large, simply use a poker or a small screwdriver and create your own hole. Add a little glue to the loose end of the belt and secure it to the rest of the belt. Next, find a thin wood circle disc that is an inch or two larger than the diameter of the largest opening of a lampshade. If you have a lipped edge on your wood disc, paint the edge with some acrylic paint. Do you have some wallpaper scraps? Now is the time to use them, and peel and stick wallpaper is perfect for this project. Measure the diameter of the wood disc and then measure a piece of wallpaper that is just a little longer than that measurement. Peel off the backing of the wallpaper and apply to the center of the disc. Smooth out any bubbles with your hand or a straight edge. Trim the excess wallpaper that is hanging over the edge of the disc with some scissors. You now have the center covered, but you need to fill in the edges. Take the left side of a piece of wallpaper and splice it into the right empty space on the disc. And vice versa, take the right side of that same piece of wallpaper and splice it into the left empty space. Most wallpapers are designed so the edges can be easily matched up. Match up the seams, press onto the disc, and smooth out any wrinkles with your hand. Then, trim off any excess wallpaper with scissors. Last, place the wallpaper disc on the top of the lampshade base to create a brand new accent table. I picked up this wire laundry basket on Amazon. I am taking this outside where it's nice and airy and I'm just gonna add a couple coats of paint. Painting the wire can be a little bit difficult. You need to paint it from the inside and out. So I'm just gonna take my time and add a couple of coats. So I picked up one of these wood rounds from the craft store. They're 10 to $15 if you get them on sale. The first thing I did was sand it all down and now I'm going to add a wood stain. I chose a light gray. It's gonna blend really well with the black wire down below. Once I've achieved the color that I want, I am just gonna take this cloth and wipe off any excess stain that's on the wood. To protect this wood and help it hold up to whatever use I put it through, I'm gonna add a clear stain. This is a satin water-based sealer, and I'm just gonna apply very thin coats with the grain of the wood over the entire piece. Again, making sure I get the sides too. Okay, so now that the wood and the metal base are dry, so I'm gonna take this wood round and flip it over. Then I'm gonna take my basket and put it on top of the wood round upside down. Now I wanna add some stoppers to the wood round so that when that wood is on top of the table, it doesn't slide around and it's a nice sturdy end table. So I'm just using a Sharpie to mark five dots on here where I wanna put my stoppers. The stoppers that I'm using are actually feet for furniture. So they just pound in normally to the bottom of chairs, but they're gonna pound into the wood. You could also use adhesive rubber feet if you have those as well, but you want something on here so that the wood doesn't move around. Okay, it's time to put it together. I am putting this in my living room to store blankets. It is great for cold weather, so we can just grab the blankets we need. It's also gonna store a couple pillows. When I set the wood round on top of it, it is nice and sturdy. I can put a plant on here, books, a lamp, whatever I need, but that I'm still able to pull that round off and use it as storage. I hope this inspired you to go make your own wire and wood table for far less than you can buy them online. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.